Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. Good morning. Our opening song is number 316, as we gather at your table, number 316. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus be with you. Amen. As we gather to celebrate the Eucharist today, we pause and we ask Jesus to forgive us our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant we fear, Almighty God, that the revered intercession of St. Hedrick and St. Margaret Mary may bring us heavenly aid, just as their wonderful life is an example of humility for all of us. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. 
Now the works of flesh are obvious, immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, rivalry, jealousy, outburst of fury, acts of selfishness, decisions, factions, occasions of envy, drinking bouts, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, against there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also follow the Spirit, the word of the Lord. Response to psalmist, those who follow you, Lord, will have light of life. Those who, follow, those who follow you, Lord, will have a light of life. Blessed the man who not follows the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord, and meditates on his law day and night. Those who follow you. He is planted like a tree, planted near running water, that yields its fruit in due season, and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The Lord said, Woe to you, Pharisees! You pay tithes of mint and to brew and of every garden herb, but you pay no attention to the judgment and the love of God. These you should have done without overlooking the others. Woe to you, Pharisees! You love the seat of honor in synagogues and greetings in the marketplaces. <clears throat> Woe to you. You are like unseen graves over which people unknowingly walk. Then one of the scholars of the law said to him in reply, <laughs> Teacher, by saying this, you are insulting us too. And he said, Woe also to you, scholars of the law, you impose on people burdens hard to carry, but you yourselves do not lift one finger to touch them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you have ever been tempted to do something wrong? Yeah, even some of the grown-ups have, yeah. Okay, it happens all the time. Supposing you go ahead and do the bad thing, how do you feel? Are you happy? No, you feel guilty, don't you? Yeah, and you're kind of sad. And if you do the wrong thing, you have to worry about getting caught. And then, oh boy, then things really get tough, don't they? Mom or dad get upset, teacher yells at you, your friends get mad at you. Yeah. 
That's what happens when you do bad things. Okay, and that's what that first reading is all about. St. Paul is saying, if you listen to the Spirit, He'll tell you to do the right thing. And we all have that inner voice right inside of you. It's kind of like a computer. And as soon as you're tempted to do something wrong, you know right away. So we just listen to it, then we don't have to worry. But if we do the wrong thing, well, then we get into trouble. People yell at us, we're not happy, we'll feel bad about it. We're just kind of miserable. On the other hand, if that voice says it's wrong and we don't do it, then we have peace. We feel good inside. Nobody's going to yell at us. Uh, and uh, we don't have to worry about getting caught because we didn't do anything wrong. But the trouble is some of us are pretty dumb and very often we don't listen to that inner voice and we know something's wrong, we do it anyway, and then we have to face the consequences and it's not very pleasant. Okay, so it's always good to really try to tune into that inner voice and follow it. If it does, it'll save you a lot of trouble in life and you won't have to worry, okay? And then in the Alleluia verse, we're told to follow Jesus. And if we follow him, he'll take care of us. You know, some years ago, I was over in, in the Holy Land, and I remember looking out of my hotel window, it was way up high in Tel Aviv, and there was a big stockade, oh gosh, almost as big as this area of the church, a high wall about that high, and an opening about this wide. But one thing I noticed right away, there wasn't a gate to close that door. So my first question was, how do you keep the sheep in there all night? And then I noticed too, shepherds, about four or five different shepherds were leading sheep into that big corral. And I'm thinking to myself, how are they gonna separate the sheep in the morning? Well, I mentioned that to the hotel manager and he says, that, well, just keep an eye out there tonight and tomorrow morning, we'll get up early and watch them. It's really interesting. Well, they all led their sheep inside of that big corral and they didn't have a gate to keep them in, did they? So you know what they did? They unrolled their sleeping bag and they slept in that opening area there. So they became the gate. And then in the morning to separate the sheep, one shepherd went over there, one went over there, one went over there, one went over there, and they all started calling out. And as the sheep came out of the pen, they just automatically divided. They heard their master's voice and they went and followed them. Kind of cool. Okay. Now we're sensible and wise. We'll listen to Jesus and follow him. If we always listen to that inner voice, we won't get into trouble. We won't have people mad at us we can live in peace and we can be happy. How many of you would rather be happy than sad? Yeah, I think all of us would. Okay, all we have to do is use our common sense and use our head and do the right thing and listen to the inner voice and then we can be happy. And that's what Jesus wants for us too. He doesn't like it when we're sad. He likes us to be happy because he loves us. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer for the Pope and all clergy that they look to Christ in all they say and do. We pray to the Lord. May all government leaders and church officials work together towards a vision of peace for all nations. We pray to the Lord. For all people to have a greater respect for all life and and end to abortion. We pray to the Lord. For all, for all Catholics to pray the rosary as a sign of our love for our Lord Jesus and our blessed Mar Mother Mary, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all those who work 
the land that they may have favorable weather to bring in a bountiful harvest. We pray to the Lord. For all elderly, sick, lonely, and homeless, that they will be provided the strength to overcome their hardships through the love and mercy of others. We pray to the Lord. Mm. For the members of our parish who have died, that they may share and joy of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own needs and intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Elle and Helen, folks are celebrating their 70th wedding anniversary today. So we pray especially for them. They come here today thanking God for 70 years of married life together and all the blessings he's given them. And we pray with them that God will grant them good health and happiness for many more years before he calls them home to heaven. So we pray for them today and their family gathered here. We pray to the Lord. O oh God, our Father in heaven, please grant us these and all our needs, for which we pray to you today in Jesus' name, for he is Lord forever and ever. Thank you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer with humble and contrite hearts. Wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sins. Thank you. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and it is willing to his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humble, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. With your spirit. Share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. Please join me in making a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let's join together in singing number 326, The Body of Christ, number 326. This is the body of Christ, beautiful, broken. Give 
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty, most merciful Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for a moment. <clears throat> Seventy years ago, you proclaimed your love for each other in the presence of God, your family, and your friends at St. Francis Church in Humphrey. Today you come here with a much deeper understanding of the promises you made to each other in your wedding day. Grateful to God for the many ways he has blessed you throughout your life together, for your children, your grandchildren, great grandchildren. And we pray I uh, join you in asking God to continue to grant you for a few more years together here, and uh, then for an eternity of joy, sharing your love in God's presence in heaven. So we pray with you in this way, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, and congratulations to both of you. <laughs> Mrs. Clink's uh, third graders are taking the vocations cross this week and praying for vocations to the priesthood and religious life. And you all need to pray for vocations to the priesthood and religious life, but even more importantly, some of you boys and some of you girls think about becoming a priest or a sister and sharing God in this way in a special way. It's the best thing I ever did. I don't think you find anybody in Columbus happier about what they do than I am as a priest. So keep that in mind. Also, there's a special prayer on front cover of your missalettes. Why don't we pray that together now? It's the prayer to defeat the Nebraska Pro-Abortion Initiative. Almighty God, Almighty, God Almighty Father, creator of all human life, we implore your love and your mercy upon the people of the state of Nebraska as they face serious threats to the dignity and sanctity of human life. We beg you, O oh Lord, to move the hearts and minds of Nebraskans to vote against Initiative 439, which would do profound lasting harm to women and babies in our state. Bestow upon us the grace, Eternal Father, to remain steadfast in our charity and care for all pregnant women and preborn babies, that they would know the protection of faithful love. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Our Lady of Guadalupe, patroness of the unborn, pray for us. Also, I get these cards in the mail, and this is from the Nebraska Embracing Life Action, and they're telling us to vote no against 434. Four, and I totally disagree with that. I'm not happy with the amendment that we have, Initial 434. I wish it banned all abortions, but it restricts us as much as possible. And this is what the present law is, so it's restricting at present. And our governor worked so hard to try to make it to cover all babies, but he lost, well, he wasn't able to get that through, but he was able to get it restricted to what 434 is all about. And there are people going around and sending these cars saying, don't vote for that, uh, vote no in both um, 434 and 439. But the, the bishops of our state, Grand Island, uh, Omaha, and um, Lincoln, all say vote for 434. It's not perfect, it's not what we want. I wish it banned all abortions, but at least it restricts it to some degree. But if 439 wins, then nobody is protected, and anybody can have an abortion any time. So vote for 434. Sure, we don't like it complete because it's not complete, but it's better than nothing. And hopefully we can pass that, then we can work to make it more broader and include all unborn babies. So please, please, please talk to people, and when they talk about saying voting no against 434, tell them, you need to vote for that 
If you don't, you're basically voting in favor of the negative one that we certainly don't want. So please, please become informed and then listen to the bishops. They do know something about theology and life and they're telling us it's the best we can do and it's better to have some restrictions than to have none at all. And if you vote against 434, you're gonna enable people with 439 to win and restrict all abortions, period. So please use your head and listen to common sense. It's not perfect, but it's better than nothing. And we work from there. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 384, sent forth by God's blessing, number 384. Sent forth by God's blessing, our true faith confessing, the people of God from his dwelling take leave. God's sacrifice ended, oh now be extended, the fruits of this mass in all hearts to believe. The seed of Christ's teaching, our inner souls reaching, shall blossom in action for God and for all. His grace shall incite us, His love shall unite us to further God's kingdom and answer His call. With praise and thanksgiving to God who is living, the tasks of our everyday life we embrace. Our faith ever sharing, in love ever caring, we claim as our neighbor all those of each race. One breath that has fed us, one light that has led us, unite us as one in his life that we share. Today's morning mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors.